Hello, Steve White, Trick White 89 for Steve Arts 89, Star Trek's alleged gatekeeper. Now, I'm really sick of this story. Apparently, there is a myth that somewhere in the vaults of Paramount, there is a Shatner cut of Star Trek V, The Final Frontier, on the same level as the Snyder cut of Justice League. It doesn't exist. It's a myth. People need to stop perpetuating this. Now, um, first off, I love Star Trek V. It's one of my favorite Star Trek films. I think it works on a real emotional level that some of the other films don't have. And a lot of those bigger films, the other films that had bigger, um, you know, universe ending sort of drama and bigger action sequences and things like that, which are great the first time, but they don't really hold up over time. Once you know the Jeopardy, they don't have the same effect as they do the first time you saw them. The emotional stories that the characters go through in Star Trek V, I think, um, are really, really good. And they work. Every time I watch the film... You know, I get as much out of it as the first time I saw it, which a lot of the films I don't get that because, like I said, a lot of the films rely on action and adventure, and once you know where those are going, they don't have the same impact, whereas the emotional stories do. So I think it's a really great film. There's this idea that there's something wrong with it, it needs to be fixed. I think this comes from a lot of small-minded people because the film didn't do well critically and didn't make a lot of money because it wasn't really the film Paramount wanted back in the summer of 1989. It wasn't the sort of big popcorn, crowd-pleasing action adventure. It was a different type of film. doesn't mean it was a bad film. It wasn't what sort of Paramount fans expected. And it's just very easy to jump on that bandwagon and say, oh, it got bad reviews, didn't make money, so it must be a bad film, so I'm just going to trash it and put it on the bottom of the rankings and stuff like that. And it happens to Star Trek V all the time. I don't think it's warranted. So I'm not a hater who doesn't want to see new versions of the film. I just am not happy with the way people are sort of um, looking at this. Now, how did all this talk come about? Well, there's issues of um, deleted scenes, um, effects, and uh, an alternate ending which Shatner seems to believe will change and fix the film. Now, I'm going to get to that last. Now, why are people talking about director's cuts and so forth? Well, because back in 2000, they did a director's cut of Star Trek 1, the motion picture, which was warranted because Star Trek 1, the motion picture, was not really finished. It was rushed into the theatres, didn't have a final sound cut, didn't have a final edit. Um, the director didn't feel like he got to finish the film. So going back, there were a lot of things to change, and, it, and the director's edition feels like a different film. It was warranted. Um, now, um, there were some issues with that where they reshot them, like a couple, like one sequence really bothers me, this Starfleet um, headquarters scene. Um, instead of finishing the effect shots that were started, um, they create their own sequence, which doesn't match the artistry and style of the rest of the film, and it was bad effects back in the day. They remade that, but they kept it basically the same style. It doesn't fit the rest of the film. Um, I don't want to see that happen to Star Trek V. Now, Star Trek II, they did a director's edition of that for a DVD and then later HD. Um, 4K, and there was a problem with that where supposedly, allegedly, um, there were a couple of audio sequences that were off, um, some audio was missing. They found one and corrected that in time, or they had insurance for that, but they found a second line that was missing um, in an added scene, because they added a couple of scenes to the film, that's all they did for the director's edition of Star Trek II, and uh, one scene, they left out the audio the second time, and then, uh, because I believe they couldn't afford to fix it or didn't want to fix it, they claimed it was an artistic decision that they added this new shot, but then removed the audio and just kept the shot in without the audio, so it's just pointless. And we're supposed to believe that was an artistic decision. No, they just didn't want to fix it, in my opinion. I don't want to see that happen to Star Trek V. Uh, and Star Trek VI was interesting, because when they released it on video and then DVD, they released a different version of the film that was in a different aspect and had about two minutes of extra scenes added, which everyone got used to watching. Uh, then when they did the director's edition, they had to do something because it was they were just releasing the same version again, which is different for the theatrical cut, but what we were used to. So to make it a, something new, they added um, insert shots of the crew members, the, the characters who were um, outed as traitors by Spock during the mind meld, and that's really just there to justify it being um, a, a different version of the film. And then when they released the Blu-rays and the 4Ks and everything, um, they went back to the original theatrical version, which... Um, closed in the aspect ratio, cutting out some of the screen we're used to seeing, and removed those scenes that we were used to seeing. So doing a director's cut in 4K of that version with the extra scenes back, I'd really like to see. And I don't care about the extra shots during the mind mail, they don't bother me, but they were just done to justify you know, themselves. Um, so those are some of the issues with the other director's editions and that. Now, so far as missing scenes and stuff like that, um, a lot of Hollywood films are given times 
where you have to, like Shatner was told, you had to make the film an hour and 45 minutes. So some scenes were deleted, not because they didn't work, but just because of time. They could add those back in, do an extended version, fine. Um, some of the effects work. Now, overall, I think Brian Farron uh, gets a bad rap, because basically Shatner blew his budget early on, and that was the main problem with um, the final, the, the ending not being filmed the way Shatner wanted, and I think it's the reason some of the effects aren't on the same level of quality as the other films and the other shots in this film. Um, the shot of the Enterprise um, after the landing party has been captured and they go up to Scotty and Chekhov on the bridge and they're trying to um, work out what to do in the establishing shot there. It's one of the most beautiful shots of the Enterprise ever and I've seen, like my niece who isn't a fan just saw that and was like, oh my god, that looks so beautiful. And some of the shots are like that, the, the planet inside the, um, the barrier. A lot of these effects are really great. Um, and the practical effects he did on the set um, with the rear projections and the, uh, the miniature shuttle bay and the, um, the, the life-size shuttles, all that looks amazing and has a real reality to it. And some people are saying, oh, they need to redo it all with CGI. They'd be able to do more. They'd have the cameras moving around and the ships buzzing around and everything. But it wouldn't look real. It would look like animation. And they'd lose that sense of reality. I really felt like that was real, those scenes. I love the shuttle scenes. Um, now, the main effects issues are, um, there's really two things. One is the scene where Spock and Kirk are falling slash flying down the mountain. Um, I don't know why they use orange, green, and blue um, clothes for Shatner and Nimoy, because that would have been a nightmare for the compositing, because what screen colour do they use? Can't use green, can't use blue, can't use orange. What do they do? I don't know what they did, but whatever they did, it looks awful. They should have used rear projection colour wouldn't have been an issue, and I don't think the rear projection would look any more fake than the, um, the composited image that they were hoping to create, because I don't know if they could go back to the original footage and fix the colour of the, the, the clothes and um, save that scene or not, but um, that looks awful. The other thing that doesn't work, and I blame this on Shatner's budget issues, I reckon they would have he would have done better, but he didn't have the time or the money probably to do more, but when the Enterprise is going up into the galactic barrier, uh, they basically they just use like an ink tank with um, some effects and filters and fluoro dye and stuff and it, it looks just like that and it doesn't have any real dimension it just looks it looks bad so there's a couple of shots like that that don't work and I, I put that down to probably Brian Ferry not having the money to finish and doing doing the fix the way they were designed or planned because of the budget issues which were totally Shatner's fault he was given money by the studio he had a budget he agreed to it he blew it, he expected them to give him more money, they didn't do it, and then he blamed them forever that they ruined his film because they didn't give him more money because he blew his budget. Take some responsibility, Mr. Shatner. Um, there's that. Um, now, so far as the ending. Now, in the ending, we have the Shakari god monster creature thing, and it's basically a bunch of projections in um, a, a bolt of light that's coming up from the, 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 the ground, a hole in the ground, and then it gets hit by a torpedo and gets injured. Now, why this creature would suddenly turn into a bunch of rock monsters or manifest and create a bunch of rock monsters out of the surrounding um, rocks to chase Shatner, I don't understand. Now, that was the original scene. Basically, Shatner um, ran out of money to create a bunch of these costumes. They made one rock creature costume. They didn't like how it looked. They didn't... They knew they couldn't turn that one suit into a whole sequence of um, convincing rock monsters, so they abandoned it and went with what they ended up creating, which I think is far better. You have this mysterious, changing, shifting creature that sort of um, resembles what you saw earlier, but is its own sort of strange um, entity, shooting fire, shooting lightning out of its eyes at Shatner um, as it chases him up a hill, and then Shatner turns to look at it, and we don't know what it's going to do or what it is. I find that far more mysterious and interesting than a bunch of rock monsters. I mean, what do you do? You just run from them or shoot them? Like, like they're just rock monsters. They're, they're just men made out of rock. I mean, there's really not much there. Um, and changing that, creating that, putting that back in the film, um, is not going to change the film and make it a different film or make it a better film or fix the film. Like, this whole myth that's been built up around this film, that there's this unrealized alternate version or alternate ending that's going to change or save the film, it just doesn't exist. So, um, yeah, I just really wish people would get off it and stop talking about this and perpetuating this myth. I'd love to see an extended version, like I said, a director's cut or something where they add some scenes back and fix a couple of the shots that didn't work. That'd be fine. But the idea that it's going to make it a different film, like the Snyder Cut, or change it, um, you know, like, like 
the Donna cut of um, Superman 2 or something like that. It's just, it's not going to happen, doesn't exist, so please stop perpetuating this. I've seen a bunch of videos and articles about this, and this is just not going to happen. Um, it just doesn't exist. And I wish Shatner would stop blaming Paramount, because he's just trying to take the blame off for him, and he's done that by creating this myth of this film that doesn't exist, that he created, that he just isn't allowed to see, and they keep saying, why won't Paramount let us have this version? Because it doesn't exist. Um, and yeah, so I just had to vent, I just had to talk about that, I had to do a video about it, I needed some YouTube therapy, because it's been annoying me for years, and it's just gotten worse in the last year or so since the um, 4K Director's Cut was announced. Um, and I get why people are pushing for it, I'm happy for them to do a new version of the film, but um, not change it so much that it, you know, like, we're not gonna, there's nothing to change it into, and in trying to change it and make it new, add new effects, it's, it's just, it's not going to work. Um, you know, like new modern day effects, trying to change it, it's not going to work.